Good morning, pregame crew. Happy Wednesday. Audio and visual check. Before we get started in three minutes, Spies making a little leg up. Hi, Brett, P. Court, Mustang, Jorge, Dana, Tony, Benjamin, Melissa Hall. Hi, Melissa. Brett, I don't know if Jason will be here today, but we will make sure that you get the proper follow-up as to whatever Good your morning, question Good morning, pregame is. crew. Happy Wednesday. Audio and visual check. Before we get started hey, in Dragon three Man, minutes. Thank you. Spies Perfect. making a Jorge. little leg Thank up. y'all. Hi, Brett. All Pete right, Court, we'll get started Mustang, in just a Jorge, little bit. Dana, Tony, Benjamin, Melissa Hall. Hi, Melissa. It is the Reddit morning. Brett, I don't Reddit know if Jason will be here today, but we love. will make sure that you get the proper follow-up as to whatever Good your morning, question Good morning, pregame is. crew. Happy Wednesday. Hi, Mohammed, Audio hi, and visual check. Before we get started, that three minutes. Oh, man, thank you. If I expect you to any value in today's show. Hi, Brett. All Pink right, Court, we'll get started Mustang, in just a Jorge, little bit. We'll go over Dana, the market. Tony, Benjamin, Melissa Hall. Hi, Crypto, Melissa. It is the Reddit. And shakers and technical morning. Setups. Brett, I don't Reddit know if Jason's going to be able to follow up. Make sure that you get the proper follow-up. Good morning, Free Game crew. Happy Wednesday. Audio and visual check. It's not going to Before we get started, that drives me nuts. Thank you. If I expect you to what about now? Okay. Ah, okay, I think, okay, what about now? Okay, got it fixed on the sound. Let's give it a few seconds and see if it's still a double loop. Echo, echo, echo. Perfect. I mean, who doesn't need two lorries, right? I think my husband just jumped off a very tall building if he had to deal with two lorries. All right. Awesome. Perfect. I just want to make sure y'all are awake. It was just a test. Congratulations. You passed the test. <laughs> All right. So... It's 6.30 my time, nine, uh, eight, what time is it? 8.30 Eastern. I'm Chart Gal Lori. I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. And we have a thriving community with a thousand members who are actively involved in crypto, what a night, and marijuana stocks, uh, Canadian stocks. We have a lot of different interests, a lot of different channels. We cover Reddit channels and a specific channel for there. Unusual options activities, dark pool buying, and we're all constantly contributing setups into the community. All right, I think we're good now and I will get started. So I'm gonna scroll out a little bit. I'll go to, so if you're interested in my chart setup, screenshot this. Here are my moving averages that I use. The yellow candles are inside bars. I like to trade um, tightening ranges. The CM Ultimate RSI timeframe, you can chart multiple time frames if you so choose. And Thinkorswim Default TTM Squeeze, I like to use the squeeze to look for pressure building. I'm gonna delete this now. Again, the format is, I'll go over the Fab Four Futures Commodities crypto and then movers and shakers and technical setup so now i'm going to scroll out to the hourly and let you screenshot these values if you would like sorry they kind of go over to the left i was looking at them on different time frames so let's look at it on a different time frame what happened yesterday so yesterday's story of the day the qqq double top that we were looking for for a potential short worked it absolutely was a great trade. It went over a few more pennies than what I anticipated, but it still worked and was within the range. So right now we are opening up. It's a yellow bar. So today's futures bar for ES is a yellow bar, but it is not an actual inside bar till it closes within the range of yesterday. So yesterday we hit 42.30 within $8.25 of the futures all time high i.e. a double top so we double top yesterday and then we recoiled we are squeezing i'm watching this so the squeeze is kind of letting go we have a little bit of momentum to the upside but we need more volume we need more volume why weren't the bears able to pull it down below the daily 8 ema volume 
they couldn't do it because of volume. So that's the story, daily end sidebar, weekly double top with the all time high. Then we scroll out to the four hour. So the most likely scenario, so our goal every day as technical analysts is to figure out what's going on over here, what's going on with the black space to the right. And we can only do that with probabilities. So with probabilities, this is the most likely scenario. If that's our last four hour high, and this is our most definitive low, what's the most likely scenario? We bounce, get a lower high, and then got to give ourselves enough room for a higher low. We are negating that bear flag. Actually, let me do the Fibonacci's and make sure we are. So we need a close above 4205.75. So you can see we're running into it right now in the four hour, and that would negate the possibility of a bear flag. That it's closing, pushing over the EMAs, so that bodes well for the ES bulls. Now let's go in a little bit closer. So now we're going to look on the hourly. What's the most likely scenario? So we have a resistance here, 420775. If we were to come up past this area, we would still be looking for a lower high compared to 4230 on that four hour. So, but then we have enough space for a higher low relative to 419150. So just stay kind of clued in. That four hour will give us a lot of clues looking for that lower high, but on the hourly, just a slight pullback would be welcomed by the bulls and then get that running start to then go on to higher highs and go tackle that 4230. Most likely scenario is we have economic data. Let me go pull, uh, okay, let's see. Oh, thanks Dragon Man, got lots of messages. So let me go back and read week okay so this week here's our our number so weekly unemployment report and may's private payrolls data is due on thursday we will be followed by crucially crucial monthly job numbers on friday investors are tracking the labor market's recovery and then today we have the fed's beige beige book so thursday we have some data what tends to happen when we're waiting for FOMC days and we're waiting for data is we tend to go sideways as we just kind of wait. It, to me, let's think about it like a dad. A dad who's pacing back and forth in the labor and delivery waiting for his baby to be made just nervous, nerves. That's what happens when we go back and forth before we per receive that crucial data. So that is what's happening. I would expect a lower high relative to that 42.30 and then the tighter we go. So our key levels for the next couple days, support of 41.90 and resistance of 42.30. How could we take advantage of that if we were iron condor traders, which I am, we could sell a call spread on any bounce to the middle of this range. Let's say, well, let's figure out what the middle is. Let's go back to that Fibonacci. So if we could bounce to 4210 area, that may be a good area to sell an iron condor call spread above 4230 and then sell a put credit spread below 4190 and then close it on Thursday on tomorrow before Thursday's number. So we could get Friday's expiration go above that range. That's if we bounce into 4210 area, then we could take advantage of premium collapse. If that doesn't make sense to you, that's okay. Uh, slowly and surely, we'll make our way toward options trading, and the goal is to roll out some type of options class in the near to midterm. So that's ES story, NASDAQ. NASDAQ, let's kind of scroll out here. So on NASDAQ, we broke Friday's high by $9.50 yesterday, and boom, that was that rejection. That's that QQQ rejection. So let's go look at it on QQQ. So QQQ, we had 33557 from Friday. Yesterday, 33579. We broke it by 22 cents, and then huge pull down. I hope you took advantage of that. If you did, always let us know if you got a winner out of this. It helps me, just keeps me motivated. So on the four hour, what's the most likely scenario with yesterday's huge range? If we bounce at all, it would be to stay within this range inside bar. So if you don't feel comfortable trading NDX options, you could do an iron, iron condor with QQQ. Take advantage of premium collapse. Noting we do have a squeeze that's forming on QQQ. So what's the story of the day? This level right here, 33143, 
must hold. It's an absolute must hold. So if we come down into that level, let's say 33211, the pre-market support, that may be an area to enter long. If we fall below it, stop out and then take another stab at it at 33143. How do I know that's a safer or there's no such thing as a safe trade, but a trade that makes sense, I will be watching market internals. If market internals are falling apart, apart at open, I'm not gonna attempt this bottom fish, but if they are soft, so they're just soft, they're not terrible, ticks aren't over negative 1,000, then I would look at a bottom fish of 33143. So first bottom fish attempt, 33211, 33143, second bottom fish attempt. This is king of the mountain. If you want to take a screenshot, please feel free. I have dot, dot coin, crypto coin going crazy out the corner of my eye, looking beautiful. So with QQQ, this is the story of the day. So if you go tell your wife, you go tell your husband, man, what was that Lori? What soapbox was she on today? QQQ bottom fish is the trade of the day. If we get any pullback, that is the king of the mountain trade set up for me. Okay, so we talked about NASDAQ. Now RTY, much stronger. So we're already getting through resistance. Much stronger than some of the other names. What does that help? That helps the AMCs, the GameStops, the BBs, the Knox, all of these different Reddit names, they are small caps. And when we have this IWM lift, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats. So on the daily, we are, we're confirming the four hour bull flag. Your next resistance is up at 232270. If we were to get that, now we know our experience with megaphones or broadening formations last week on oil didn't go so well, but if we were to come up into 232270 and break it around 2325, I would look at a potential short. Then the next resistance up at 236820. So when we play our 15 minute game, who's the strongest? Let's look at YM. So on YM, I'm waiting for my, they didn't fill in, I didn't save it. So three, four, eight, two, seven, then three, 35,000. That's that key resistance support, 34,484 and 34,408. So odds favor a lower high relative at 34,8027. Come back at that hourly. But we start looking at this time frame. If we're on the four hour, in order to get that higher high, higher low, you're talking about at least four or five candles. So we're talking about a couple days of the tightening range. So you're gonna see someone in the community today say, oh my God, it's chop. But we saw it coming. We can see it coming. When this bounces, that NASDAQ bounces in to this 13700 area and pulls back, then we're gonna expect chop. Market internals will tell us it's more than chop and it could be more bearish action. So on the hourly, Dow's looking good. So go back to that question, strongest RTY, then YM, then ES, then NQ. What does that tell you? Go long on the small caps. If you have a long setup, that is the area to go long. And on NASDAQ, be patient with your bottom fishes. Commodities. So we have the dollar was bouncing this morning. It's getting slightly rejected. So with gold, we got a little pop, 1914.90. Let's go out to the four hour. So on the four hour, very comparable to all of our other charts. We're looking for a lower high relative to 1919.20. We're giving ourselves enough room for a higher low relative to 1896.40, 1894.20. One second, I wanna make sure that I have a, a dot positioned. No, shoot, I missed it. Oh well, I missed the dot move. I thought I had some. Okay, so with gold, shorter term time frame on the 15 minute, we got a big pop. You have support back at 1896. That's right, Mr. Newt. Okay, making sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, good morning, y'all. Okay, oil. Oil is popping. So inventory has changed. Inventory, I believe, is tomorrow. Please confirm if you're a big oil trader. You need to know that. So instead of today at 1030 Eastern, I believe it will be tomorrow at 11 a.m. And I don't know about Nat Gas. So please confirm. You have a 15 minute. We've lost our trend here. Higher, low, lower, high, lower, low. So on the hourly. Hourly, very constructive. You have support down at 67.78, double bottom, then 67.39. You have a resistance at 68.48 and 68.47. So let me just stay, I'm gonna 
go back and forth between commodities and crypto. So yesterday, I'm always looking at Bitcoin and how we'll go break resistance, our support, and then bounce. Here's an example. Uh, we will break support and bounce. It happens a lot in crypto, happens a lot in commodities. Look at this, penny, penny break, and then bounce. We collect, so the brokers collect a lot of fees on crypto and on commodities, on stocks, not so much. So it behooves them to break those stops, stop people out, and then resume higher. Break those stops to the upside and then pull it back down. So it happens a lot in futures and crypto, and that is a little bit of logic as to why it would happen. So yesterday on that NASDAQ, Resistance break by $10 here. Break by $10, stop everybody out, and reverse it. You're going to collect a lot more fees like that. So that's a little bit of conspiracy theory for you. Apple can't get up off the mat. Apple's got to get up off the mat for QQQ bottom fish to work. Got a potential four-hour bear flag. 123.94, 122.85 are your supports. So on the daily... We are below the EMAs. As long as we aren't below the EMAs, uh, it is bearish. And Tesla and Apple look the worst to me of our high beta names. And I have to remind myself, they're the ones that had the reverse stock split. So y'all remember like three Januaries ago, Cook came out and said, oh, revenue is not going to be that good. And then it dropped down to like $130. Well, that was pre-split. So Tesla and Apple just have some heaviness to them that others don't. And it may just be some writing of the ship on the split really elevating that valuation. So on Tesla, we are below the weekly eight, uh, eight and 21 EMA. We're looking for a weekly lower high. I like Tesla to the short side and Apple bulls have got to show up. So potential four hour flag, bear flag, which isn't good. Resistance 125. So bears will be looking to pile in here, here, here. Your support, 123.98, 123.94, if you want to take a screenshot of those levels. Yesterday, I had the best time shorting last week's highs, going long last week's lows. Uh, what time is it? Okay, I've got a little bit of time. Let me show you what I mean. Google. Google, so this is Friday, and this is yesterday. Look how pretty this was. I posted it in the room. Google is testing Friday's low, which Friday's low happened to be the week low of last week. So we came within $2 and look at that $30 bounce. Going long on these weekly levels, daily lows, and having that clear support. Trading doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to make it hard. So uh, Tesla yesterday, we had this low here from Friday. 622.51 and we had a five minute falling wedge into that level and then we bounced. I bottom fished that, I posted that in the room. Shop, shop, we tested last Friday and the last weekly high, 1280, look at yesterday, 1278.93. So if I'm going too fast, go back and rewind this. Within $2 and then we pulled back 34 bucks. Trading is not difficult. It's not easy either, but it can be somewhat straightforward and simple if you don't get too twisted in your brain about what it really is. AMC, that's why y'all are here, right? So AMC, if we look at the monthly Fib retrace, actually, what did I have to do to... So on the three month, the high was 36.13. The low was $1.91. So this is the Fib extensions. If you want to put this on your chart, your next extension target would be 45.44, then 57.28, and then coming back down, 28.81 would be your next support FIB-wise, okay? So once you get through all-time high, you have no resistances. But in it, isn't it interesting we have a FIB resi resistance of a FIB extension, 1.272, right there at 45.44, and we hit within 75 cents and pulled back. What's going to happen at open? Of course, it's the million-dollar question. What's going to happen over here? So we have the people that FOMO'd out on this move. They're going to want to buy. You're going to have the people that bought yesterday that said, hey, I want to sell it open. This is a gap up open and I like it. I'm going to take some of my profit. 
Then you have the call sellers and the shorters that are, oh, you know what, and they've got to cover. So when the call sellers cover, they're buying options left and right. So when they buy their options to cover, they could be squeezing the overall underlying, but AMC goes up to $73 if you want to remember this. That is the option strike. That's as high as it goes this week. If we were to get over $73 or like $65, it, and we'll see it open if the market, the MMs, if they're going to add more strikes above $73, then we really get that gamma squeeze. If you don't know what a gamma squeeze is, no big deal, but that's what happened on GameStop. And with AMC, they need to hold 36.13, the prior all-time high, for any push up. This will provide the most volatility for the experienced trader today. BB. BB. Okay. Okay, so if you're interested in BB, here are the FIB levels. So I pulled from that high uh, in January to the low, May 3rd, or May. So let me give you some more price levels. If you are trading this, and it can be as simple as going long at support, short at resistance, waiting for that two minute trend change. So you're waiting, you come into support. Sorry, y'all, that's an errant. So waiting for, pull back and waiting for a two minute higher high, higher low, trend change, going low and putting your stop below that same that higher low, same thing at the resistance, waiting for a two minute lower high, lower low and putting your stop at that lower high. But we need some price confirmation and volume confirmation to enter those longs or shorts. Okay, coin. Coin, here are your levels if you're interested. Uh, I went short coin up here at this resistance 243.50 yesterday, had a successful short, and I'm still looking short coin, and that may be a little biased on me because I'm so sick of Coinbase, but overall, I, don't, I think it's overvalued from a fundamental perspective, but I will continue to just trade the technicals, whatever it tells me to do. So here are your levels on coin. I would be looking to go short if it were to run in a 245. So 245 would be my level. You see yesterday it broke by eight cents and pulled down. So just be careful with these names. GameStop, here are your levels, your resistance levels and your FIB levels. So 260.290, which is our 50% retrace, 260.75, support at 245. If we were to barrel up into 263, have a two minute high, higher low, lower high, lower low break, I'd be interested in shorting GameStop, but you have to be pretty experienced for these or they will tear you up. Okay, NEO, if you're trading NEO, it's very extended. And on the weekly chart, we are looking for a lower high odds favor, lower high relative to 43.22. But these bulls have been on fire. So how will I know if NEO is going to keep going or pull back? If you answered volume, you were correct. We're gonna watch the opening five minute chart. What does that tell us? If we got bull volume pouring in, I would be careful shorting it. If we have excessive bull volume, then it could be a vol climax. But you see here, Dan pointed this out on his video, that bull volume showed us that we were still going up. So let's see what the opening volume is for NEO. That may give us a clue. This may be my uh, king of the mountain number two setup for a short into 42. The closer you can get to 42.67 and then roll over on the two minute, the better. 43.25 is that next level, 43.25. Skills that pays the bills. They're buying somebody, I didn't understand this. So if you have a balance sheet and you start buying someone, that means you're using your cash or, you, or incurring debt to buy someone. Typically that's not a pop reason. So be careful with this one. 1847 was that pop high, 1836 regular trading hours. This may be a short, we'll see, support 1781, 1693. I like QS. I actually have it written down. We have, you see I have an alarm set here on QS. So we have a falling wedge that's failing to get lower low with follow through now we're going sideways so i want it to get over 28 dollars for a potential long so i like qs for potential long 28 dollars would be the break your support is down at 26 dollars 
Zoom. Zoom had earnings, odds favor, an inside bar. An inside bar is wrong. That is the t wrong terminology. But a four hour inside bar or 12 hour because here's the earnings reactions high and low if you want to map those out. We will see. They had positive earnings from what I understand, but your levels to possibly go long 328.53, short 337.80. What is short long? Short means to sell and be a bear. Long is, means to buy and be a bull. Okay, Tesla, I don't like it. I like a short of 626.80 or 628.17. Your support 620.33 and then 617.21. Then below that 613.41. Spy, here are your levels. You want to screenshot them? I had all kinds of nuggets every day that I don't get to. Okay, so I will. So Mark Douglas's book Trading in the Zone is definitely my number one trading book recommendation. Trading in the Zone, Mark Douglas. He says toward the end, and he gives you an exercise to improve your trading. And I'm I'm going to butcher it. I wanted to pull up the actual. Uh, narrative and what he says but basically it's to get 20 trades so he tells you to find your edge and then repeat your edge 20 times without deviation so what's your edge that you could repeat 20 times without deviation it could be a bottom fish top fish bottom fish weekly inside bar top fish for weekly level like I did yesterday with shop and what are some of your higher win rate? I could tell you weekly uptrend, waiting for a four hour oversold condition in a weekly uptrend could be your edge and that you set your stop two and a half percent below the, la the price of entry and then you profit take at seven and a half percent, something like that. I'm just trying to help you refine your edge. I can say that this would be a higher win rate than most because you're buying an oversold but in a weekly uptrend. This is not my edge, I, but I do look for it. But I'm just basically showing you what kind of edge you need to articulate in order to successfully repeat trades in your edge. Find your edge, be patient, and if you're struggling, then find your setup and trade it 20 times and document everything and figure out what happened emotionally, psychologically. Did you miss a support level, miss a resistance level? What details did you not go along with the market? Correlations, and this should help. All right, trading in the zone, yep. Tilray for Mustang, of course. And then five minutes, TCG members, Dan will be live. Okay, we got a nice little EQ. Let me give you those levels, Mustang. I'll do a little overkill so you can screenshot it. So we have a tightening range. By the way, CGC got an upgrade. It was from a whole a buy to a, excuse me, or sell to a hold or something like that. But basically it was a small upgrade. So watch CGC Tilray news tends to help these things propel them out of tightening ranges. So that's Tilray. And CGC could be a four hour bear flag. Let's see. So definitely Tilray looks better than CGC despite it getting news. Awesome Luke, Eric, Brett, Joshua, Errol, I links. Thank y'all so much. If y'all could give me a thumbs up if you found value in today's show. TCG members, I'll see you over in the room. And please use stop losses and I will see y'all tomorrow.